Good evening, Arlington. Um, thanks for joining us uh, for our first virtual select board meeting. Um, I hope every, everybody's adjusting to their new normal and taking care of themselves. Um, as a preliminary matter, I'd like to confirm our member access. This is Diane Mahan, chair of the select board. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on, on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirm affirmative. Dan Dunn? Yep. Joe Curo? Yes. John Hurd? Yes. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. And to, I, to our staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Our town council, Doug Heim? Yes. And remotely, we have our board staff, Ashley Marr. Um, any anticipated speakers on the agenda? Could you please respond in the affirmative? John Leone, town moderator? Yes, here. Here, thank you. Uh, I'll now read the introduction to this remote meeting. This open meeting of the select board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth, given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. Somebody's not muted. <laughs> in order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a public, publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by telephone conference video conference via the Zoom app, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. For Zoom meetings, Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. ACMI is playing a live broadcast at acmi.tv. Um, you can also go to their website where they are also streaming this meeting live and look for uh, replays hereafter. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to share screen your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by recording. For the meeting materials, all of the materials for this meeting, except any executive session materials, are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard, and we recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus, unless I, the chair, notes otherwise. And now some ground rules. We are now turning to the first agenda, agenda item. Before we do so, permit me to cover these rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any further comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, for everyone, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair, myself, yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so again through myself, the chair, taking care to identify yourself. And for those items with public comment, after all members have spoken, the chair, chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. 
Finally, each vote taken in this meeting by the select board will be conducted by roll call vote. So thank you for letting me go through the business of that. Uh, okay, this is a meeting of the select board, Monday, March 27, 2020, conducted by remote participation. The first item on our agenda is an ex executive order on remote participation. Attorney Heim. Thank you, folks. Um, this agenda item is present. Just so folks can see on the Novus agenda what the executive order entails and how it operates for remote meetings. This is one of our first remote meetings. So we're all familiarizing ourselves with the technology at work, but I wanna make sure that members of the public have access to the governor's order that essentially suspends the ordinary conduct of open meetings in a physically accessible location. There doesn't need to be any uh, discussion or vote on this matter. We just wanna make sure that we're uh, operating in a transparent way with the public and that they have access to this important document. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Um, so with that, we will move to the consent agenda. Consent agenda are agenda items two, three, and four. We have the minutes of the meeting, March 9, 2020, a request for Arlington High School ice cream fundraiser for Dana-Farber Cancer Institute um, on May 23rd, 2020, with the rain date of May 24th on the Jefferson Cutter House lawn from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Daga Rostogi, the AHS Scoops Club, and we have appointment of new election workers, David R. Morissette, 225 Waverly Street, unenrolled, Precinct 18. Um, first, I'll call on Vice Chair, Mr. Dunn. Uh, move approval of the consent agenda. Moved by Mr. Dunn. Next, I'll call on Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I second the motion. I would also like to note that I've been in touch with a member of the uh, Scoops Club just to uh, advise them that uh, although we're likely to approve this this evening, that um, the, the um, eventuality of the event going off is, is related to what the, the, the uh, state of emergencies are at that time. Thank you. Sure. Um, any comment, Mr. Hurd? Nope. Any comment, Mr. DeCourcy? No comment. Um, I just for the record, I just want to make sure Sagar Rostogi is not zoomed in. And thank you, Mr. Kira, for your remarks. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine. So now that you have a motion made and seconded, I believe you can call the roll. You can actually call the roll via a roll call vote. Okay. I, I was just checking if you or Attorney Heim had anything you wanted to add. I'll no, take I that do. as a no. I do not. Thank you. Attorney Heim. Would you like me to conduct the roll call vote, Madam Chair? Yes, please. If you could conduct for the consent agenda items two, three, and four in a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Carroll, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. So we have a 5 0 vote. We'll now go to traffic rules and orders and other business. The first item is agenda item five, a vote for acceptance of gift donation of JJ Gardner, uh, town council attorney Heim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this uh, administrative item is on the agenda because it uh, has to be done in a, within a certain time frame. Thank you uh, to all the folks listening here who are probably tuned in for other reasons. Uh, the long and short of it is that the town received a um, generous donation from uh, JJ Gardner um, and the select board's vote is required to accept that donation. Okay, Mr. Hurd. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Second. Seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Um, any comment or question, Mr. Dunn? None, thank you. Mr. Carroll? Uh, none, thank you. Um, I will just say JJ Gardner, um, I've seen her a couple of times at different events. I want to thank her and everybody. I think they believe it was an Elks fundraiser um, to raise this money to go to a really important um, budget delineation uh, that the town of Arlington has. So with our sincere thanks as my colleagues and attorney Hyman said. So on a motion 
for agenda item five by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. That's a 5 0 vote. Agenda item five is now closed. We'll go to agenda item six discussion and vote postponement of annual town election. Before I call on attorney Hine, um, could I ask if our town moderator, Ms. J John Leone, is with us? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Attorney Hine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as the board is aware and members of the public may be aware, there's no mechanism or there was no mechanism for the postponement of a town election uh, absent obtaining a court order. I have good news. Uh, a few hours ago, the governor uh, signed into legislation an act granting authority to postpone 2020 municipal elections in the Commonwealth and increase voting options in response to the declaration of emergency to respond to the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Uh, this bill, which was originally sponsored by our own uh, Representative Dave Rogers and supported by both Representative Garbley and Senator Friedman, um, essentially is a one-off that allows a select board in consultation with local election officials and board of registrars to postpone the town election uh, to a date um, up until June 30th, 2020. In other words, the town election would have to happen before the end of June. Uh, the legislation was uh, just approved. Um, so the analysis is pretty fresh. But one of the other things that members of the public should know is that the legislation also essentially builds out timelines for folks to be able to um, register to vote and vote at the new, for the new town election. It also um, allows previously submitted absentee ballots to be counted. Um, so it prescribes a lot of the administrative things that we would wanna see um, in that uh, legislation. Uh, because uh, the boards had a had posted on this agenda for a vote and discussion, um, in some ways it might be possible for the, the board to take a vote tonight. However, I'm cognizant of the fact that we really haven't had time to prepare um, for uh, explaining all the nuances of this legislation, but it does give me confidence that uh, seeking a court order isn't necessary. And I would seek the board's perspective on whether or not the board wants to take a vote tonight to support a uh, postponement of the town election. If you'd like to have a discussion as to when that election uh, might be, and if it became necessary for us to convene again, um, if the board could foresee doing that uh, before the end of this week. And again, I'm, I'm sorry, this legislation was just signed into law by the governor a few hours ago. Um, and um, we're all trying to sort of catch up on all of its nuances, although it's a relatively straightforward process in terms of um, the actual vote itself to postpone the election. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if, because um, I'm not seeing um, who would like to speak next. I would ask town manager, Mr. Chaplain, are, are everything set with you? Uh, I, yeah, I'm I'm good. I, I think if you want to if you want to go down each of your uh, each of the members of the board, um, I think that would be a good way to proceed. Okay. I'm I'm sort of rotating rotating it. If I could see, I'd one of you raised your hand first. I'd do that. So um, I will start with Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, and I appreciate the comments from Town Council. Which, as he said, we just did receive this. Um, from the law now this evening with the governor signing it. And I certainly would support postponing the election, but I'd like to hear from the, the uh, whoever signed up on the on the list and members of the public um, and Mr. Leone in terms of um, other pr proposed dates, uh, most likely in the month of June, but I, I, I don't want to throw out a date yet, but certainly uh, mm -hmm. would like to proceed with the vote this evening. 
Okay, I would like to check with my other three colleagues if they want to have any questions or comments in this time, or if I should turn to yeah. our town moderator, Mr. Leone, and anyone else who wishes to speak on this. Mr. Dunn? Thank you, Mrs. Hahn. Um, so I, I certainly am in favor of postponing election, but, uh, and I recognize, and also I'll just say up front, I recognize that that's a vote to take to extend my term, which is not a vote <laughs> that I take lightly. I mean, I recognize, but I, I do think that circumstances warrant it. Uh, but at the same time, I, I recognize that it's very extraordinary that that that, that kind of vote would 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 happen. Um, but that said, the thing that I'm trying to work through, like again, without trying to put a specific date, part of this depends upon what we think we we're going to be doing with town meeting, and part of what that depends upon is what we think we need for the budget and things like that. And so if you you know, you can, we can certainly imagine a world where we're going to be okay doing votes sometime in May. Uh, but I mean, of course, we don't know for sure that that's true. But then, and then would town meeting be in June? I understand that there's this concept that there's going to be legislation that permits us to level fund our budgets, which would permit us to um, put off town meeting, perhaps like, you know, even through July and August. But I, I, and I suspect um, perhaps the town manager is, or the moderator has given more thoughts to this than I have. And so any thoughts on that, I think, would be helpful for me. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I, I did want to note that um, I, I believe that today there were two companion pieces of legislation that went through as well. And these two pieces actually moved off two special um, House elections, and they moved them off to uh, June 2nd. So. That seems to have been the determination of the legislature as to a, a reasonable time period um, around when it, it may be safe for us to, to go forward with this. Um, I have some of the same concerns as Mr. Dunn around the, the timing of um, uh, town meeting. We'll wanna hear from the, the moderator because obviously, uh, let's say for example, for argument's sake that we went with the first Saturday after that date the legislature set. So let's say we went with um, June 6th, it's still, it's a pretty uh, compressed time frame with a new clerk and um, and then getting a uh, town meeting um, in. I know we have a separate discussion on that, uh, but we definitely have to postpone it. I guess one of the questions that I have um, around our, any actions we take this evening, um, do we need to choose a date this evening or do we need to just take a vote stating that it is our intention to postpone the election uh, to a date um, before June 30th, which I, I think is, is what the legislation uh, specifies. Because we all know that there are a lot of logistics as well involved with um, selecting a date and, and scheduling it. And I don't know if we have, have that in hand this evening or not. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, right now, and before I call on Mr. Hurd, um, I'm hearing, whether we just postpone, whether we postpone and, and state a date right now, June 30th, but we need to hear from, uh, before I call on the moderator and anyone else, Mr. Hurd. Yep, so I'm definitely on board with postponing, of course. Um, I think, I don't know that we have the information in front of us right now to set a date, but also as far as how far we need to push this out, you know, it also, like to look at other options for the way we can conduct the election as far as you know absentee ballots and mail away ballots if those are an option for us it could shorten the amount of time that we need for the the election so but you know on board postponing i think we have a, a little more discussion to to have about when that will be and what that election will look like Thank you. Um, and uh, before I ask to call on our town moderator, just because um, we received a correspondence from Marianne Mars Marcinkowitz, and I apologize for not saying that correctly, um, with this agenda item number six, um, she states uh, that it, she feels it, it's confusingly written, which makes it unclear whether the June 30th date represents a date by which it must be determined or whether the postponed election must actually be held by June 30th. And she indicate, indicates that she would favor the latter interpretation, um, that it must be held 
from my reading by June 30th. Um, so since, since that's an ongoing question on the table, I just want to put that into the record and call on our town moderator, Mr. Leone. Uh, the only concern that I have is that the election does occur prior to town meeting happening. Um, as the next agenda item will show, I have certain limited powers to postpone town meeting in 30 day increments. But that being said, I would like to have the election prior to because there's a lot of interest in uh, the town meeting election this time. And I would like to see those new town meeting members participate in the new meeting and also have the new um, select board member present at the next town meeting. Whether it's in late May or early June, uh, I think I would be able to do an early June date and do town meeting at the end of the month as we usually have that three or four week separation would work for um, town meeting purposes, but we'll be ready to go. Okay. Um, I guess my question would be, um, Attorney Heim, uh, concerning any sort of interface um, that we need to have or maybe not have with the Board of Registrars, does that play into our decision whatsoever? Thank you, Madam Chair. If I can address a, a few of the early questions and comments. Um, so Section 1A of, of the bill asserts that um, a vote basically has to be taken to postpone the municipal election to a date certain on or before June 30th. So it does seem like we should have a date in mind when taking a vote. Now that doesn't preclude the board from taking a vote to send a clear signal to the public and people who are concerned tonight, just so everyone can understand that that's what we intend to do. I think it's important to um, consult with the uh, town clerk's office um, and the legislation's a little bit um, does say that, that you should consult with uh, both a local election official and the chief operating officer, which in our case would be the town manager, on certain logistical issues. And I think it might be wise to at least get the perspective of the Board of Registrars um, in advance of a final vote. Uh, but I, I think that, again, you could take a vote tonight to send a message to the public that you want to postpone the election and you're going to take the measures necessary to do that. With respect to town meeting, I don't want to get too far ahead, but just so everybody listening understands, the moderator has the ability to postpone town meeting by 30 days. Uh, both the moderator and I are of the opinion that he can do that more than once. Um, he doesn't have to postpone it 30 days. He could postpone it any amount of time he wants. Uh, and I do think that the uh, governor's office and the legislature is supportive of a little bit more flexible interpretation of that law, which was originally enacted to deal with things like hurricanes, um, snow emergencies for town meetings, where it wasn't necessarily going to be a public emergency for this long. So I do think that you can work out a schedule um, that allows for the town election before town meeting, um, and that those postponements could be consecutive uh, with respect to town meeting to achieve that purpose. Okay, um, so that answers the registrar question, Attorney Heim. Um, I think my question would be is if the motion is to, and I'm not saying it should be, to uh, postpone the election to a date certain no later than June 30th, but not name the date, um, does that mean once we get all the information analysis from you, hear back from the Board of Registrar and Town Manager, um, that we would, um, unless there was a select board meeting coming up that was timely, otherwise we would have to post another meeting. That's correct, Madam Chair. I think you'd have to post another meeting uh, for that at least limited purpose of taking the formal vote to postpone the election to a specific date, yes. Okay, and I'm, I'm sort of leaning to that, but I wanna make sure we hear from everyone and then also hear from my colleagues because there could be another option, but I agree that we need to take some sort of definitive step step so that we can when people say is there an election april 4th 2020 we can say no there's not um uh, usually at a select board meeting um we don't ask for public comment um 
that's what we normally do, but this isn't uh, particularly a uh, normal time. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to handle this. Um, I would look to um, the town manager or Jeff Monroe to somehow uh, e either I hear from or I see a name on the screen of any sp speakers from the public who would like no more than three minutes to speak on this so I can create a list. Uh, Madam Chair, there is a raise hand feature in the Zoom app that participants could use. If participants uh, use the raise hand feature, I could uh, give you those names when the hands are raised and you could then call on them if you're comfortable trying that. Certainly. Um, so I would at this time, it's okay if no one wants to raise their hand, but if, if anyone would like to give some remarks um, on this agenda item, which is discussion and vote postponement of annual town election. Um, I'll give that a few minutes, maybe not a few minutes. <laughs> Madam Chair, oh, I, I do have the luxury of seeing some of the screen and mm -hmm. uh, I can see for certain at least that um, um, Janice Weber or Weaver is uh, raising her hand. Okay, Janice Weaver. Um, and Jordan, um, Jordan Weinstein has also raised his hand. Jordan Weinstein. If any of my other colleagues or um, town manager or anyone else can see raised hands, I'd uh, give it another few seconds. Okay, seeing none. Um, first, I'll call on our assistant town clerk, Janice Weaver. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. I never can find that hand raising button. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to know about sending out the absentee ballots if I should hold on for them, to them for now. We don't have them all ready anyway, but should I send them out as soon as possible? I know other town clerks have and put a note in it to say that their town um, elections are being postponed, but they did send out the absentee ballots. And I just wanted to know what your feeling is on that because we may have to order more as time goes mm -hmm. on. Uh, my initial reaction would be yes, but um, I first will ask any of my colleagues, unless Attorney Hine wants to speak to that. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the legislation does include some provisions about voting by absentee ballot, including um, the allowing the use of absentee ballots to vote early by mail in municipal elections. So it'd be something that I'd be happy to talk with uh, uh, Janice more about, um, but I don't necessarily think that it can hurt to send out absentee ballots, but I'd be happy to talk more about it um, offline. Okay, thank you. Okay, and just to um, sort of piggyback on that po point, um, I, I did see uh, language in from, I think it was Senate President Spilka about um, allowing people to register to vote perhaps 10 days before this election. Um, I don't know if it applied to this or the two special elections that they put off, as well as increasing um, voting by mail, that it, absentee could also include um, any concerns around the co coronavirus coming out. And there were a few other points. So um, Attorney Heim, am I confusing that with something else? No, Madam Chair, that's correct. The uh, last day to register to vote, if we, use the special legislation option that um, has just been passed will be 10 days before the date of the rescheduled election. And the dates will be built out from that. And I'll be happy to work with the clerk's office to help navigate those issues. Thank you. Um, I'll now call on, I believe, town meeting member Jordan Weinstein. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chair. I just wanted to, uh, uh, support uh, what John Leone had stated, and uh, and Adam seemed to uh, Adam Chapter Lane also seemed to agree with that the uh, the election of the new uh, town meeting members uh, be done prior to uh, any uh, convening of town meeting, as well as the the election of uh, the select board. That's all. I just wanted to go on record with that. Thank you. So, um, Diane, we, we have hands raised now from Michael Jacoby Brown and Michael Ruderman. Let me just write that down. I don't want to, so many things going on in my head like everybody else. And hey, Michael Ruderman. 
that was too redundant. Okay, um, call on Michael Jacoby Brown. Thank you very much. I just really appreciate your doing this online. So those of us paying attention to our health and our, can do this. Uh, just one uh, suggestion, and uh, though I hate to make more work for the town, but I hope in the interests of uh, uh, our safeguarding our health, it may be possible to make more people, allow more people to vote absentee and perhaps having, and I've seen this in other <clears throat> locations to have drop off places uh, throughout the town, at least in a number of places, so people do not have to go to the post office, get a stamp, uh, and then walk or perhaps drive to a mailbox and mail their absentee ballot in, but have drop-off places that are walkable, hopefully, for people around the town, so people, rather than having to mail their ballot in by U.S. Postal Service, uh, well, would be able to drop them off in various places throughout the town and vote that way, absentee. Thank you. Well, thank you for that suggestion. We're now looking at how we go about our business in a different way. Um, so certainly everything is up for discussion. Um, and that's a good point to us, for us to look into. Um, next, I have Michael Rudiman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate being able to address the meeting tonight. A uh, very brief comment and, and one question. My comment would be, if at all possible, I would urge the board to try to set a date certain for the election this evening. Uh, everyone who is campaigning for a, a town meeting seat or a town wide seat has some decisions to make, particularly in how to conduct the business of that campaign, when to advertise, when to contact voters, how to do that. Uh, we're all waiting for, for a, a date upon which to base uh, those election activities. The question is for, I, I would believe, if you would direct this to the moderator, I'm, I'm wondering, John, would we have to change the order of articles in town meeting if we don't have uh, new members elected? That is Article 1 of, of the town meeting. Uh, can we dispense with that if, it, if we had to, or do we absolutely have to have, have an election on the books before we open the town meeting? And that, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Uh, town moderator, Mr. Leone, do you have any comment? That's a good question that hasn't been addressed by the legislation, as I understand it. That's also one of the reasons I would like the election to be held prior to town meeting, as it is Article 1 on our warrant. Okay. Um, at this point, um, first, I would ask if any of my colleagues or Attorney Heim want to use the wave hand. Um, either to uh, provide a comment or perhaps make a motion. If not, I'll go through. Seeing none. Uh, Lynette Martin has raised her hand uh, from the public. Okay. Um, let me just, Lynette Martin. Hi, sorry, I was muted. Just a quick question that if we do decide to move forward, um, if the if the pandemic lasts longer and it looks like we need to start doing this by primarily mail-in vote, a reminder that it might be good to put some thought into how we would reach um, people that might not be native English speakers, if we can put translations out there. And also um, that we might wanna start messaging out to the community to make sure that they don't uh, handle their mail for whatever number of days it is. Uh, I forget how long the virus is supposed to land, uh, be on paper, but to make sure that our residents are protected if we're going to be, um, and, and also our town, whoever at the town level is handling receiving the mail because there might be licked envelopes and stuff like that. So just to give some thought to what safety precautions and communication uh, techniques we might want to use. That's all. Thank you, Annette. Um, again, uh, uh, Attorney Heim, do you have any comment on this before I think I'm going to call on Mr. DeCourcy? Madam Chair, uh, members of the public, to be clear, uh, what the, and I understand that we're all sort of a little bit um, hampered by this legislation just being passed. What section 1B says is the select board postponing a municipal caucus or election pursuant to this act following consultation with the local election official 
the Chief Operating Officer of Municipality as to logistics feasibility, vote to reschedule the municipal election. So, you know, whether or not the board feels prepared at this point in time to consider um, this consultation with, you know, uh, Ms. Weber and uh, the manager uh, is a little bit of a tricky matter. It's, it's I, I can understand uh, and well, well appreciate Ms. Ruderman's comment, which is that there are lots of candidates who are trying to figure out how exactly they should be using their time and resources, especially for you know local elections. Um, on the other hand, um, I just don't want to put anybody in a in, in a tough spot of feeling like they're prepared to speak to the logistics and feasibility of an election on June second versus you know. June 11th at this particular moment. I will say that um, I, I've tried to keep in touch with our uh, local health officials. Um, obviously the conditions keep rapidly changing. And so it's it's been a difficult thing for us to uh, build out a perfect timeline. And I'm not sure how clear that timeline is going uh, to get um, within the next week or so. So there's, always, there's gonna be a degree of uncertainty that the board has to grapple with no matter what. Um, and I agree. And also we, because our world, our town has changed and changed the way that we can conduct our business, our town business, our personal business. And under the law, we do have to, besides everything else that was stated, um, involve the uh, registrars um, and make sure everything we're doing fits the timeline that they can get those things done. Um, so I'm hearing one thing and I am on the ballot, but that doesn't affect anything that we can post postpone to a date certain no later than June 30th. And then once we've put in all those pieces with the Board of Health, with the um, Board of Registrars, with the um, Assistant Town Clerk, um, we'll just come back to a regularly scheduled meeting or schedule one instead. But there could be other options. I believe Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, Mr. Curo up. has his hand raised, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kiro. That's okay. Oh, Madam Chair. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if it is in order, I would like to move that the board state its intention to postpone the uh, previously scheduled April 4th election and that we uh, request um, a report on the logistical feasibility of conducting the annual town election on either Saturday, June 6th or Saturday, June 15th um, to be reported back to us uh, at our next uh, scheduled meeting. 6-6 and 6-15 or 6-6 and 6-13? Uh, 13, I apologize, 13, okay. the two Saturdays, correct. 6-6 2020 or 6-13 2020, that is correct. Um, Madam is, Chair. Uh, Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would offer a second, but I would also just suggest Mr. Kara that the motion say, um, or other date as they suggest. Like, I, I love that you're signaling these are the dates that we're looking at, but just in case they both turn out to be train wrecks, um, I don't want to, like, I'm like the reason we want to leave our optionality open until we, until we really, really decide. Mr. Carroll, will you accept that as a friendly amendment? I do. Mr. DeCourcy would like to make a comment as well. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I, I agree with what Mr. Kiro said. I, I almost think in, in trying to harmonize sections 1A and 1B, and Attorney Heim has done a great job of that, given the fact that the, the uh, law was just enacted a few hours ago. Um, it seems like we do have th this consultation process and and you know, clearly we have to take a final vote before the initial election um i think we should signal to the community um in response to mr ruderman's concerns that it perhaps as a date that we will move this election to a date no earlier than um june 6th mr mr Caro just just laid out the two dates so i'm comfortable with that but a question for town council on section 1b of the of the act the the consultation it seems is if we may have to schedule a meeting and and 
actually have this consultation before we make the final vote. I mean, we can take a vote tonight, but in order to follow the act, it seems as if we may have to have a, a formal consultation and then vote. I just was wanting to get town council's view on that. Yes, and, and but I agree that if we don't set it tonight, it's either the next, whatever coincides first. Attorney Heim. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, Mr. Corsi, that's a good question. As as you'll note in looking at Section One A and One B, there are some slight discrepancies that probably wouldn't exist if there was a little bit more time um, for this type of legislation to be sort of fine tuned. But um, I think that. My interpretation of it is that when it says local election official, we just want to exercise an abundance of caution when it comes to the Board of Registrars. If the Board of Registrars is comfortable either, you know, uh, following the recommendation of the uh, assistant town clerk um, or they want to take some other action, I don't necessarily think that there has to be a meeting and then another meeting. The other possibility would be that we would have a joint meeting of the Board of Registrars and the Select Board, uh, which would be fine. But I, I guess I just want to make clear that that consultation isn't spelled out in terms of having to be a discourse like the one we're having now. It could be a set of here's our guidelines and recommendations uh, in writing to the to the Select Board. It doesn't really prescribe exactly how that consultation will take place. And uh, before I call on Mr. Hurd, I know I maybe repeating this again, but um, once we go through all that and we this vote tonight does not set a date, no matter what, we will have to have an agenda item in a future select board meeting um, designating June 6th, June 13th, or any other date before June 30th. Is that correct, Attorney Heim? That's right. I mean, as I understand the, the, the present uh, motion as amended by, um, Mr. sorry. Dan. Mr. Mr. Dunn, it's it's to uh, it's that you could take a vote tonight to signal that you won't have it um, before June sixth, um, and that to uh, sort of firm that up though you'd have to make a consultation with the clerk's office, the manager, obviously both of whom are represented here tonight, but also um, probably at least touch base with the board of registrars and make sure that they have no objections to it. Okay. Mr. Hur. Yeah, so just quickly, do what is the feasibility of us? Do we have the ability as a board to expand the mechanisms by which people can vote? A lot of discussion has been made about, you know, mailing a ballot to all registered voters and having them mail back in. Um, if that's mm -hmm. something that we can take up, it certainly would affect the date that we can do the election since, you know, if it's feasible. For people to vote by mail, the election could be hypothetically mm -hmm. earlier, or it would be a date certain because if we set for the first Saturday in June, we know that we're getting the ballots in the hands of the people and they know how to to cast their votes, and we wouldn't have to to further extend it if you know the health crisis hadn't ended at that point. Yes, and um. I'll, before I call an attorney Heim on that, then just my interpretation of it, which is just one person, um, there's really sort of six tenets or, or six statements of it, which does talk about um, expanding, you know, being able to vote 10 days before whatever the election date, being ex expanding um, so that they're um, voting mailing ballots versus just absentee ballots. Um, and uh, there are a few other um, options in there. And I, I think what I'm hearing, and I would like attorney Heim to be the f final word on it is, as we have these um, discussions with the clerk's office, the board of registrars, um, I would anticipate and hearing from my colleagues here tonight, whatever um, uh, remedy or resource is available of what came out of the Senate bill, we're certainly going to take um, opportunity to take advantage of every one of those because, as you have stated, Mr. Hurd and others, we now really need to think about different ways um, to make sure everyone has the right to exercise their vote, but also um, the right to um, be safe and, and stay healthy. Attorney Heim. So the town does not have the authority to alter the conditions under which um, 
absentee ballots are essentially cast. The bill does provide for that, however. It provides for um, enhanced use of absentee ballots. That shouldn't, though, be confused with whether or not we have the capacity to do that quickly. Uh, Janice, you might be able to speak better to this, or maybe the manager as well, but we don't necessarily have enough absentee ballots on hand to distribute them to the entire uh, voting base in Arlington. So those are examples of some of the logistics. The legislature has afforded greater flexibility. I don't think that we can expand that flexibility on our own uh, to, you know, for example, let people vote by email or something like that. But we do have uh, the ability to, but, but the, the bill does give increased opportunity for people to vote by absentee ballot, including anybody who, um, who, uh, you know, is deemed unable by reasons of uh, a physical disability to ask, uh, to cast a vote in person. So I, I think that there, there, there's, there's two pieces of that, Mr. Hurd. One is, uh, as you said, uh, this can definitely accelerate the, um, uh, when we would hold the election. But the second part of it is only if we've got the ballot resources that we would need to really make that widely available. Um, I guess I'll leave it to um, Ms. Weaver from the clerk's office if um, she has an answer, some part of an answer, or if the answer is she would like to um, have meetings and further investigate this, um, or maybe have no comment at all. Ms. Weaver? Okay, um, I would have to order more ballots now if we, if we were going to expand it. I already expanded it by about 200%, but they're, they are coming in this week. The, the only concern I have is when will my staff be able to come back to work? Because, um, I mean, I could probably do it by myself if I start now, but it's difficult and I would like my staff to be able to return. And I don't know when that's going to be because, well, nobody knows when it's going to be. So I was wondering if there's any, um, if anybody knows when everybody would be able to come back. I can order. I can always auto more ballots. There is a, a fee assessed to it. It's not exorbitant, though. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I would anticipate is um, certainly by the course of this week that um, Ms. Weaver from the clerk clerk's office or anyone else who is appropriate um, could work with Attorney Hyman and, and or um, Mr. Chapdelaine to uh, really get a handle on that, to, and then we all can make a better informed decision, but I'd like to call on Mr. Hurd. Sorry, I didn't have my hand raised. Oh, you didn't, okay. okay. Um, Ma Madam okay. Chair, there is, a, there is another member of the public with a hand raised, but I'll leave that to your discretion if you'd like to hear more from the public. Okay, I'll take one more from the public because I'm, I am sort of relaxing the rules. Um, Jordan, um, it's Jordan Weinstein. Jordan Weinstein yeah. for a second. All right, okay. one yeah. more time. No, I was sure. just going to suggest there are plenty of printers who will print whatever it is that you want, put them in an envelope and mail them for you. Mm -hmm. So it is possible to just outsource the entire process if, if you have the money. I, 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 oh, can I okay, well, all right. Um, what we have right now, it seems like, you, you know, further discussions need to be have, had on that um, with the clerk's office, with the registrars, um, unless one of my colleagues... Um, I have a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn to postpone. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, one more comment. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dunn. Um, I just want to be clear that it's not just a money, it is not a money issue that's limiting us about the ability to just mail out ballots to everybody. That's also would require an act of state legislature. That's not something we can just take on by ourselves. Is that, I, I think that may have gotten lost in, in, in that conversation. Okay, and we'll. Leave, um, I guess I'd leave that to Attorney Heim to further advise us on as we go through. It was my understanding that that was one of the six areas of relief, but maybe not that we could um, not just have absentee ballots, but have um, voting mail-in ballots. But uh, I don't know, Attorney Heim, if if you want to say if I'm correct or incorrect on that. So um, thank you, Madam Chair. The um, the act. Um, relaxes or provides additional measures by which people can participate by absentee ballots. 
but I'm I'm not sure as we sit here today that we can just have them printed up ourselves. I, I think those have to be uh, derived from uh, the Secretary of, of State's office. I, I might be mistaken about that, but I, I'm pretty sure that we can't just go to somebody and say, "Will you print up, you know, ballots?" As much sense as that may make in this crisis, um, mm -hmm. I, I think that there are some logistical hurdles that um, we, we do have to address. Okay. Um, so with that, um, because we do have a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn to postpone the April 4th, 2020 local election to June 6th, 2020, or June 13th, 2020, or some other date. Um, um, oh, I can hear someone is not muted. I'm sorry. Um, so unless one of my colleagues um, raises their hand, I will say on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn, uh, Attorney Hyam, roll call. Madam Chair. Oh, Mr. DeCourcy, I'm sorry. Yeah, just, just one thing as, as you read it there, June 6th or, or June 13th or some date thereafter, is, is, is it, was that the intent of, of your amendment, Mr. Dunn? Because I don't know if we should be selecting a date before June 6th because of some of the concerns that were raised. That's fine with me, yes. I'm sorry? That is fine with me, yes. Okay. Okay. So I, I guess you're welcome. The motion should say a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn to postpone the April 4th, 2020 local election to no earlier than June 6, 2020, June 13th, 2020, or other date after that. If that's correct and everyone's an amenable on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn, attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. So on agenda item six, that's a five zero vote. I just need to <laughs> clean my, never done this before and I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. So I'm also back to paper. Um, we now next go to the much anticipated discussion and we've had a little bit of it briefly. Um, agenda item seven, postponement of annual town meeting. Attorney Heim. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. As uh, the board uh, will recall from uh, the memorandum that I issued, uh, the town moderator has the uh, authority to postpone town meeting um, where uh, conditions make it that uh, members of town meeting cannot uh, safely attend town meeting. Um, our quorum rules are fairly specific about convening town meeting um, requiring 25% of town meeting members, which I think is 62 members. We also have a very specific bylaw about uh, what's necessary to uh, take on any vote that, I'm sorry, to a quorum for any vote that requires a two third majority, which is 85 persons. Obviously uh, in the current state of things, um, neither one of those things seems feasible right now. And there is some additional relief that uh, the governor's been pursuing in the legislature, including potentially giving the select board the authority to reduce quorum requirements. Whether or not that's ultimately um, a good idea or not, I'm, I, I, it's not my, my position to say, but the moderator is here um, to talk about uh, his perspective on the authority that he's granted to postpone town meeting up to 30 days um, with a declaration without having to convene town meeting. So we can do that without having to convene town meeting. And then if it became necessary, I believe the moderator and I agree that he could postpone town meeting a second time if the same conditions persist. Um, with that, I uh, defer to the board's discussion and of course, uh, the wisdom of the moderator. Okay, uh, before I call on the moderator and then, uh, first I wanna see if my colleagues would like to um, Say anything, pose any questions before we call on the moderator. I'll, I'll start with Mr. Kiro. Yeah, I, I just want to, the only thing I want to say is that I, I hope that we can find a solution that does not involve um, relaxing the quorum requirements because that would indicate that the uh, the, the crisis is, is still with us or the risk is still there. And I, I fear that that would um, severely depress the, the um, 
more senior members of, of uh, town meetings participation as well as those with underlying health problems. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, no comments. Mr. DeCorsi. No comments. Mr. Dunn. Uh, simply, I agree with the, the moderator that uh, town meeting should start after the election. Um, and I agree with that. I also agree with Mr. Kiro about um, not wanting to reduce the number of town meeting members. I'll leave it to um, Mr. Leone in his remarks. Um, people have said to me, is there any way, would it be permitted? And I think it would through the moderator, but I'd be bound by his decision that if we utilized um, the um, seating in the balcony um, for people um, who uh, were concerned and as well as with the six or whatever foot um, distance in between them, uh, but I'm certainly gonna be guided by, I just wanna check, check before we go to our town moderator, if um, our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, is, if there's anything I missed before. Thank you, Madam Chair. The, the only thing I would add from, from all the briefings we've received uh, from public health officials over the past few weeks is that it's highly unlikely there will be an all clear sounded uh, before June. Uh, and all clear likely won't be sounded until a vaccine is developed sometime over the course of the next 18 months. So um, as town council mentioned, pursuant to another matter, I don't wanna weigh in on the necessarily the policy of relaxing quorum, but um, I, I do think we should all have this discussion or the board should have this discussion with the mindset of um, by, by the time of a June timeframe, none of us should be expecting an all clear whistle to have been, uh, have been blown. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to ask our town moderator, Mr. Leone. Good evening, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, needless to say, I've been thinking about this quite a lot. I've had a number of discussions with Attorney Hahn on the subject, as well as the Mass Moderator Association has been very active. There is a bill right now in front of the legislature to expand the ability of the moderator to postpone the meetings, but as it stands right now, I can postpone the meeting where public safety is at, as at risk if we do meet. As you'll see with the letter that I have attached to the Novus agenda, my current thinking and my current plan is to, as soon as tomorrow with the boards, after this consultation with the board, release the letter that advises the town that it's my intention to postpone the meeting from the April 27th date to the 30 days hence, which would be May 27th. Now, I wanted to do it that way where I would le release this letter now so everyone knows and can get ready that we are not gonna meet on the 27th of April, but I wouldn't actually postpone it till the 27th of April to buy us the 30 day time. Um, that would bring us to May 27th, which is a Wednesday, 30 days, town meeting meets on Wednesday. If, if it looks like it's gonna be necessary, we'll postpone again. But the bill, the bill in front of the legislature now has provisions that the moderator could postpone up to a period of five days after the government clears, gives us an all clear on the state of emergency. Um, of course, I would have to consult with the board of select, the select board and the um, board of public health. But Mrs. Um, Ms. Bongiorno, who I did speak with today, and she does agree with the plan that I've laid out. Um, I've also spoken with uh, Al Tosti, the head of the finance committee. Al says that he would, and the finance committee will be ready by the April 27th date although we both recognize that that's just not gonna happen. So the only concerns um, we have, and I've had these discussions with Attorney Hahn, is if we postpone too long, will it have any negative effects upon the um, zoning articles, which have certain requirements for publication and public meetings? Um, we'd have to straighten out and make sure we don't impact any of those prior meetings and hearings that we've had that got us ready for the April date. Other thoughts that I've had were if we just meet for the financial articles alone, 
um, and promise everybody that all the other articles will be put onto a, a special town meeting to be held in the fall. But that would require the consent of the board here to put all those 10 citizen articles on that special town meeting if we choose that and to put all the other articles that are there back on a special town meeting in the fall if it looks like we're gonna have to go that far. Um, these are things we won't know for a couple of months and we're gonna have to kind of play this as it goes. There is a lot of, a lot of leeway here and there is some options. Um, I've also thought about the seating. There's no reason those seats have to be stuck together. Um, we can have the town hall staff separate the seats on the floor by six feet. We can have the town meeting members sit up in the balcony and socially distance themselves. It doesn't matter where they are. Um, with the electronic voting, I don't need them on the floor in order to handle the vote. I just need them within the enclosure of town hall. The other option would be if we um, actually did town meeting on another day, like a Saturday, and we could hold it on the, somehow maybe we could hold it on the football field down at Arlington High School and separate everybody by six feet as long as the electronic clickers could work. Um, we can find that out. So there are options if we have to hold the town meeting before we get an all clear. And as, as Mr. Chapelain says, if it's gonna be 18 months, we probably will have to hold a meeting of some sort. I don't see how we can go about the town's business without that even with the uh, powers that are going to be expected to be given in the legislation that should be coming out at the end of the week, have giving the um, town through the town manager the ability to spend one twelfth of each month previous year's budget per month until we pass another uh, actual budget, et cetera. There are abilities to do that, but um, I think we would all prefer to see a town meeting held as soon as it's safe to do so. If you have any questions about the yes. draft letter I have, I'll gladly entertain them. Yes, um, I kind of usually I do this at the end and I apologize to my colleagues. I understand that um, what we're discussing right now is um, what you can do um, in declaring a recess and continuation um, of the April 27th meeting, possibly to May 27th, but that um, you don't want to take that official step or you're recommending with the conversation from others um, to allow some more time to go by um, before we actually say May 27th. My question to you, Mr. Moderator is, is there um, currently, uh, according to the law, if you are to um, make that declaration of recess and continuation of the April 27th, 2020 meeting, is there a certain time by which you have to do it? Do you have to do it at least seven days prior to April 27th? It's the declaration, once I make a declaration, it's 30 days from the date of declaration. So if I did it tomorrow, I would. it would be um, April 24th. So no, it makes no, no yeah. sense to do it until the town meeting is here. The way the legislation is currently written, it says as soon as practicable. Um, so. No, my, my question is um, in order to, under the law, whether current or what came out of uh, or is coming out of the state house, um, to cancel the April 27, 2020, uh, I'm sorry, make a declaration of recess and continuation, could you literally do it on April 26th or? for any town meeting to make such declaration, do you have to do it within seven days uh, of the current meeting date within 10 days or could you go right up to April 26, 2020? I was planning on waiting till April 27th. Okay, that's fine, that answers it. No, <laughs> that's fine. I would and, uh, defer to a yeah. attorney Hein, he could check with the attorney general's uh, municipal office to see if that'd be acceptable. Mm -hmm. But I think under the current circumstances, we would not, have any pushback and that's my own personal opinion that's why i wanted to release the letter now telling folks this mm -hmm. is my plan of action buy us okay. as much time as possible um and i guess um i'm gonna start calling on my colleagues but th that's one question for you attorney heim and i would also uh leave a question when we come to you that from what 
I'm, myself and my colleagues are seeing that it's coming out for the municipal relief on um, town meeting. Um, I'm blanking on my question now. Okay, I'll call on my colleagues and the question will come back. I can't remember. Oh, my question would be when we come to you that um, I thought I saw some language in there that provides relief if a town so chooses, they basically could float the budget um, from month to month until a time it's determined um, that it's an appropriate and safe time to hold that, uh, that is town the, meeting. So I, I apologize, Mr. Leone. Yes, yeah, so that that month to month provision is in the um, okay. municipal legislation currently before the legislature. It would allow um, the board of selectmen may adopt the budget for operational expenditures in an amount not less than one twelfth of the previous year's fiscal budget for any type of account. Mm -hmm. So you would be able to adopt month to month budgeting. Yeah. Right. And that's that was my memory. I just wanted to make sure. So I have lost count of who I called in last first. Uh, if Mr. Chapdelaine tells me anyone has their waving hand going, otherwise I will call on Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I appreciate the letter from, from Mr. Leone. And I, I think just a, the one comment, just to be clear too, you've said it, Madam Chair, I believe Mr. Dunn and Mr. Curo said it, but I agree the town meeting, if we can do it, should take place after the election. So I think it's, it's understood. I hope it's understood here that if there is a continuance with the town moderator uh, continues town meeting to May 27th, if, if we're in a, a situation where we're close, that there would be a further continuance to, to allow the election to take place. If, if we're in that situation, we may not be, and, and there'll probably be legislation that will be passed that will make things clear for what the moderator's next steps are. But I just wanted to make that point clear in, in terms of where I am on the order, assuming uh, we can go forward in June. Okay, and because this is novel, and I forgot the rules that I set for myself, um, unless one of my colleagues waves, I, I guess I would ask um, the just doing this, because um, it's brand new, uh, if there are any members of the public but, um, that had anything, uh, um, uh, Mr. Dunn? Uh, I guess I just want to double, I, I think, uh, is it appropriate to move receipt? Is, or is there any other action that we would be asked to take in relation to this? Um, I think move receipt would be appropriate by Mr. Dunn, unless I hear something different from Attorney Heim or Leone. Yes. Um, Attorney Heim is raising his hand, Madam Chair. Attorney Heim? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, that's correct. So moving receipt, the moderator has this authority, uh, regardless of uh, what the select board does. And um, I just want to note that I appreciate uh, the chair's comments and other comments. The moderator is trying to thread a needle here uh, in the law that doesn't necessarily uh, afford or doesn't didn't necessarily contemplate this type of emergency. Again, this was sort of developed in contemplation of things like snow emergencies or other weather related disasters. It wasn't necessarily something that was contemplating a, you know, two or three month long public health crisis. Uh, so I, I do concur that I think the best uh, thing that he can do is to notice people now that he intends to postpone town meeting and wait until the last possible moment so we don't have declaration after declaration after declaration of recess. Okay. Um, first, I would like to, before I call on the town manager and return to my colleagues in any public comment, um, Mr. Dunn has made a motion to move receipt. Mr. DeCourcy? Second. There's a second by Mr. DeCourcy. Um, um, I would like to ask our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, since we're again talking about interfacing between the Board of Health and some other departments that you oversee, if there's anything um, you can add to that or anything we've missed before, I ask for members of the public and then continue on with my colleagues. Mr. Chapdelaine? Uh, no, I, I think the moderator in his consultation with Christine Bongiorno and Attorney Heim and, and the board just now has laid out a prudent course that we can continue to monitor uh, as things progress over the course of the next month or two. Thank you. Um, before I see if there are any other, if there are members of the public, uh, Mr. Kiro? Uh, no, I, I don't have any further questions. Uh, just thank you to the moderator for, for the input. 
Okay, and Mr. Hurd. Sorry. Just to, to concur with everyone else that, you know, I think the best course of action is to have town meeting after the local election. And I think the plan that the moderator laid out gets us towards that. And so I thank the moderator for that. Okay, before um, I go to the motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, if I could ask our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, if um, anybody is waving from the yes, public. Leonard Diggins, Len Diggins has his hand up. Okay, um, is there, what I'm gonna do is try to get everybody's name at once and not keep going back and forth. Um, I think, I don't know if anyone else is waving. So um, with that, I would like to call on um, town meeting member Len Diggins. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so my concern about waiting until the 27th to let people know that town meeting is in recess is that they, they won't know until the last minute. So I understand why the moderator wants to wait as long as he does, but will town meeting members be notified in some way beforehand that the town meeting is going to be delayed and not by now for sure until the 27th? Um, I'll, I'll definitely um, let the moderator handle that. My understanding is right now by this board uh, hearing from the town moderator that, um, that he intends to um, exercise his op option of declaration of, of recess and continuation for the April 27th town meeting, that that April 27th town meeting is not moving forward. Um, and that um, so nobody should worry that they're going to find out a week or a day before the 27th. Um, I'll let Mr. Neone clarify. There, there will no, be no town meeting on April 27th, um, but uh, Mr. Leone? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, my intention is to finalize that letter that you have before you tomorrow morning. I'll be sending it to um, the town's IT department for posting on the town's website and through the um, listservs for all, to all town residents as well as the PMM, the town meeting member list serve. I'll send it to the Arlington Advocate, um, your Arlington, the Arlington Patch, um, ACMI for their news and bulletin board, um, any other outlet that I can to get that letter out to everybody in town so that they know what is going to happen and the plan of action that I've laid out before you this evening. And on April 27th, when I do postpone, I'll follow the same um, course of action and um, consultation with uh, Mr. Chapter I may ask him to do one of those reverse 911s um, early Monday morning to let everybody know as well. But I, I haven't spoken with him about that yet. I'm not sure how that works, but it's going to be up to Mr. Chapter Lane. Um. Mr. Chatterlane, not to town manager, put you on the spot, but um, if there are any uh, comments you have and or other suggestions or how do you want to proceed with that? Um, I, I think, let me let me talk it through with the moderator. I we, we try to keep the use of that system for an emergency basis, though this is obviously a matter of uh, direct public interest. So I, I would lean towards it's an appropriate use, but I'd want to think it through and talk it through a little bit more with the moderator. Right. I don't want to put you on the spot right now. I haven't discussed it with Mr. Chapdelaine at all. Okay, that's fine. Um, and we certainly do have time. We have um, three meetings, I believe, scheduled. Definitely April 6th, definitely April 27th and one other. Um, but I guess a benefit here, a Benny, <laughs> is um, if we needed to call a meeting um, on a another Monday night or another day during the week. Um, obviously, we, it, this is more amenable to being able to do that. So unless um, Mr. Chapdelaine or someone tells me um, any of my colleagues or is there anyone else that wants to speak, Mr. Chapdelaine? No other hands raised right now, no. Okay. Uh, on, someone's got their sound on. On a motion to move receipt by Mr. Dunn, is, I'm sorry, I keep seeing Susan Stamps. Is, does she want to speak? Yeah, that's me. I'm here. Okay, I apologize. Um, you got a little echo there. I don't know what that means, but um, tell me, member Susan Stamps. Yeah, turn off that. Hi, um, I couldn't make my video work, but I just was a little, I just wanted to summarize what I understand to be the message to the community um, to see if I understand it. Um, and if I do maybe have a little addition to it. 
Um, as I understand it, um, Mr. Leone's letter would say that town meeting is hereby postponed until May 27th, right? Okay, and did you have any other questions? And I go if that's the case, I would think that you would want to, or I would suggest that you might want to add to the vote that, or after the town election, whichever occurs uh, first, later. Mm -hmm. May 27th or after the town election, whichever occurs later, because weren't we you just discussing having the town election no later than something like June 8th? June 30th. Um, and and possible words, date. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. You no, know, to because I, I think the sense of the board as you've been discussing the timing of town meeting and the town election is that yes, the town meeting should be after the town election. And so I think that that should be part of your motion um, because if it's not, I think there's a lot of people who are going to be concerned that town meeting is going to go forward before the town election. Um, Mr. Leone, uh, uh, regarding stating May 27th or after town election, any thoughts on that? I only have the legal authority to postpone for 30 days, but I'm of the same opinion as the majority of all of the board members that the election should and must take place prior to town meeting. Um, I think I stated that right up front and I will mm -hmm. continue to postpone until we can make that happen provided I have the legal authority to do so. And I think I'll definitely work with the board to make that happen. Okay, so thank you. So if I to, to clarify, um, Mrs. Stamps, um, yeah. All right, we, we can't we can't keep going back and forth. Yeah. If you want to ask one I, more question, Susan. Oh, I'm oh. sorry, Mr. Leone, were you done? But no, that's not the nature of this. I'm bending the rules. I'm not going to postpone tomorrow. I'm just going to tell everybody I intend to postpone on April 27th, and I will postpone it that day. But I cannot postpone tomorrow. Is that okay? So I, I I would just suggest that you might want to just add to this letter that in 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 no event will the town meeting occur before the town before election, the election. If, if you can avoid that. Um, I, 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 that certainly makes sense, especially yeah. since we have so many contested, which is a good yes. thing. And everyone's right to do um, um, yeah. town meeting um, seats. So um, so I, I'll leave that to Mr. Leone to take um, Ms. Stamps remarks and um, incorporate that into the decision. Um, so uh -huh. on a motion by Mr. Dunn, to move receipt, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, roll call, Attorney Heim. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahon? Yes. So on agenda item seven, discussion postponement of annual town meeting, that's a 5-0 unanimous vote. Agenda item seven is now done. We move to, pardon me, Agenda item eight, discussion and vote, declaring a local state of emergency, Attorney Hine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, foremost, uh, what I want folks to understand that the declaration before the board um, is similar to the declarations that were issued in Brookline, a host of other communities ranging from Framingham to Malden and consistent with the actions taken in places like Provincetown and Nantucket. Um, it contains a great deal of boilerplate language because these declarations stem from MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. Uh, they're arguably more important in some communities uh, without a strong ma town manager act, but the primary purposes of a local declaration of emergency are threefold. The first is when you declare a local emergency, you access powers granted by the Civil Defense Act of 1950 which sounds a little bit more scary than it is. That act is what created MEMA and what we use today uh, when we have mostly natural disasters uh, ranging from microbursts and nor'easters to hurricanes and things of that nature. Um, it includes getting the power to apply for and receive certain financial assistance in the form of grants and other aid the ability to have greater financial flexibility relative to measures needed to respond to an emergency, and things like the appointment of auxiliary first responders should that become necessary. The second purpose is to make clear that the manager, the health director, 
and our emergency manager, the person designated as our like local MEMA representative, may need to exercise these quote unquote extraordinary measures in parallel with state emergency declared by the government. And I understand that some folks are worried about what does extraordinary measures mean. It doesn't mean declaring martial law or anything of that nature. It doesn't mean suspending select board meetings. It means the types of authorities that I've just mentioned and some others. Um, but again, this is largely boilerplate language that you'll find in all these local uh, declarations that are popping up now that the uh, COVID-19 uh, emergency continues to sort of spread throughout the Commonwealth. And then the third, of course, is to signal the seriousness of this situation locally. Permit me to pause for a moment to speak on a few issues that were raised to my attention. Again, the declaration does not cancel select board meetings, foreclose the town manager's responsibility to report to the select board, or constrain the board's supervision of the town manager. Moreover, with respect to determination of when a local state of emergency is over, it was this office's recommendation that the manager have such an ability so the town could terminate its state of emergency as quickly as conditions would allow in the event that there's not a regularly scheduled board meeting or to wait at least 48 hours required under the open meeting law to have a meeting so the select board uh, could terminate the local state of emergency. It was not the board or manager's design, nor was it intended to allow the manager to conduct business in an indefinite state of emergency. I just wanna make clear that this is again, a largely boilerplate matter that its primary purpose in Arlington will be able to give us access to certain emergency funds and regional, um, regional uh, exercise of resources, uh, whether it be in the sort of greater Boston region or within the uh, Commonwealth. Uh, I'm not wedded at all to the language about when the emergency terminates, uh, but folks should understand that it may mean there might be a lag between the state and town assessment of response and response. And I'd be happy to answer as many questions as I can uh, about uh, about this. Thank you. Um, I guess my question would be um, before I call on my colleagues uh, concerning. I know there's been talk about it, uh, declaring a national emergency, which would which to my understanding has been discussed, but actually hasn't been done. Um, it's my understanding in reading through this that uh, one of the benefits of doing this is that if a national emergency um, does get declared, um, us being in this declaration of emergency here in the town of Arlington um, would give us the opportunity to access possibly federal funds that would become available with such declaration or am I getting that wrong, Attorney Hein? Madam Chair, that's correct. So the, the primary function of something like this in a town like Arlington, where the day-to-day -day management is already invested in the manager, the uh, director of health and human services is to ensure that in the event of uh, a federal uh, declaration, uh, which I believe, well, there's been a version of it, uh, that we would have access to to certain funds and resources. And the same thing is true at the state level. These declarations are essentially recommended by MEMA so that it's clear to them that there's been a local decision about a state of emergency. Again, some of this stuff is being grafted on to an unprecedented situation. We have um, a series of health laws under chapter 111 that provide certain authorities already to the Board of Health and the health department, but those don't fit sort of perfectly into the uh, sort of larger response that we need to have on a regional and state level, which is why we're applying uh, the sort of MEMA paradigm to this particular situation. Um, and I, I wanna make sure that there's no stone turn left, left unturned, particularly with respect to setting ourselves up to get uh, aid from the federal and state government. Okay, um, I'm now going to ask uh, the town manager first if he has any comment, and if not, second, um, if any one of my colleagues is initially waving or raising their hand to make a motion or pose a question. Mr. Chapdelaine? Only, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would only just reiterate uh, what town council said, the importance of uh, making this declaration to give us necessary eligibility uh, or potential eligibility for state or federal emergency funds 
Uh, and also, um, I think we've made it abundantly clear to the public the seriousness of this matter and um, with our several pleas for them to heed the recommendations and guidance that we've issued. But I think the declaration of a state of emergency just furthers, uh, furthers the public perception of the seriousness of this issue. Um, but that's, yeah, that's, that's all I'll say at this point. And I'll, I'll tell you that both, uh, both members Dunn and Curo have their hands raised. Okay. Um... Any, any, Mr. Carroll. Th thank you very much. I, I want to thank um, the the town council for his work uh, on this, and and the manager for all his work. I think first of all, I think it's it's worth uh, stating that um, throughout the um, <clears throat> the current uh, crisis, um, the manager has been in constant consultation uh, with the board and has kept us extremely well informed uh, on more than a daily basis. Um, as to the various measures that, that uh, have been taken. Um, uh, th that, that said, I mean, I, I do um, want to make a, a few recommendations or a recommendation uh, regarding the um, uh, expiration uh, language. Um, at, at the, the uh, bottom, it, it strikes me that um, <clears throat> if this board is taking the vote to declare the state of emergency, then the, the, the ultimate authority to lift the state of emergency should also be vested in the board. But I think that my sense is that we could probably construct this in a way that, that provides um, adequate flexibility to, to address some of the uh, issues that, that uh, Mr. Heim has raised, as well as some of the other uh, suggestions that we've received from the public. I, I'd like to suggest, and, and I think I'd have to defer to town council to word this properly, that, that we state that the declaration of um, emergency shall remain in effect until either the town manager um, notifies the uh, select board that the um, purposes for the state of the emergency are no longer um, uh, present or the select board votes to lift the state of emergency, and furthermore, that that the uh, state of emergency will not extend beyond um, June 30th, 2020, without an extension, uh, uh, um, extended declaration by this board. And I, I picked June 30th because um, that actually mirrors the 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 deadline date in the um, the election statute that we were just discussing at length. Um, and so I think it would be prudent for us uh, to come back together. And it's, it's not a, um, I think in putting that into the resolution, it's, it's not a statement that, that, um, that the manager hasn't been consulting. He has been consulting with us all along. I think it's just, it's a strong statement of the public and it does give us an opportunity to come back together. If this, this extends for several months, uh, we'll, we'll be forced to come back together and, and um, uh, discuss it in, in, in the, the public forum. So. Um, if I might put that in a motion, if mm -hmm. council has the sense of, of the points I'm yeah. trying to uh, yeah. get at. Um, okay, first, if I could just for procedurally, um, there's a motion to move approval by Mr. Kiro um, on what's before the select board with the exception um, on the last page that this emergency declaration shall remain in effect either until the town manager notifies the select board or the select board lifts to vote the emergency. And I think the third part of your motion is that this will again not um, go beyond June 30th of 2020. Do I have that just as a starting point, correct, Mr. Carroll? Will, will not go beyond June 30th, 2020 without a further vote of the, of the board. Without further action by the select board. Yes. Um, is there a second to Mr. Kiro's motion for discussion? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Um, if I could, um, could I hear from, before I call on Attorney Heim, uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and and I, thank you to uh, att Attorney Heim um, for putting this together. And, and you know, he's right in terms of the the language I, I saw a number of local declarations of emergency, and then the language that he's he's using is consistent with that. Uh, I also agree with Mr. Kiro um, that the declaration really should should be lifted through a vote of the of the select board. Um, 
I'm I'm comfortable e either way with with Mr. Kerr's motion. I, I almost think that um, pursuant to a vote of the select board is enough, but for consistency with the with with the statute, what we talked about with elections, if we want to uh, revisit that, I'm fine with it as well. Okay, and I should have said this, and I think I'm correct that. Um, Everything I have in front of me, my colleagues on the board have um, through the Novus agenda that we did receive around the topic we sort of been talking about right now, correspondence from Marian Marcinkowitz um, regarding um, the pet fifth paragraph that we've been discussing about the town manager's role um, versus or not versus in concert with the uh, select board as well as Patricia Warden again. Um, expressing her concern um, to uh, the select board um, plays a part, if not the only part in that recommendation. Um, before I uh, go to Mr. Hurd, I realized that Mr. Uh, Dunn made a second, but I didn't allow him to say anything beyond that. Mr. Dunn, did I cut you off? I did have some other thoughts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so uh, I actually, the, the, the motion, I, I can support uh, Mr. Kira's motion. Uh, the motion that I had in mind was uh, shall remain in effect until April 23rd at midnight or until notice is given. And the, the reason I had that was effectively is because it brings it to the board to reconsider it based, my intent was to, for us to reconsider it monthly until uh, we until it's over. Um, but I, I, that said, um, if the board prefers Mr. Kira's direction, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with it. Uh, on a second note, I definitely had received the questions about, um, you know, like, like for us to not give up our democracy by by putting this power with a manager. And I just wanted to just be re remind everybody that, you know, should we want to, we could convene a meeting and then we could fire the town manager. And then the new town manager we hired, I'm sure, would be someone who would, uh, you know, end the state of emergency if that's something we felt like was necessary. So the power still does lie with the board. But uh, I can, as Mr. Kira noted, the town manager has been in consultation with us, and I remain absolutely in faith of his ability to do this. And I think he's doing an excellent job. And uh, I am very happy to support uh, the, the motion that Mr. Kira made. Okay. Um... Next, I'll call on Mr. Hurd, which we have the current motion before us made by um, Mr. Kiro uh, with the not beyond June 30th, 2020 um, date um, with the language afterwards without um, further review by the select board. And then we have Mr. Dunn's proposal that um, we do this the 23rd of every month to revisit it. So I guess as I go through asking each one of my my colleagues, um, your thoughts on um, the 6-30-2020, understanding that the select board could discuss and extend it beyond, or the current motion with visiting it monthly on around 423, uh, on, on around the 23rd of every month. Mr. Hurd, and anything else you want to add? Yeah, so just briefly, not to reiterate, but you know, I would support Mr. Caro's motion. Um, just to be clear, you know, I do support and have the utmost faith in the town faith in the town manager's decision and he certainly even with a vote of the board is going to be someone that we look to for guidance as to how we're going to vote as he's in the day-to-day -day with all the with updates from state and, and uh, federal officials um, but that being said you know i'm happy to support this motion i think it's important now, not just for the federal funds, but as the town manager said, to let citizens know that we're taking this serious and that they should as well. And I think the, a lot of people have some more work to do to, uh, to take this as seriously as it needs to, um, but I'll support Mr. Carr's motion. Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, um, Madam Chair, I, I think I said during my earlier comments, I, I prefer the June 30th to the to the month to month, um, but you know, except whatever the, the the will of the board is. But I support Mr. Kerr's uh, motion. Okay. Before I say anything and continue on with this, Attorney Heim, I think we've posed some things to you in terms of 
remaining in effect until the town meeting. I'll leave that to you, Attorney Hine. Uh, Madam Chair, I think it's very clear. I've, I, I think I've got uh, what Mr. Curro's motion represents and uh, alternatively what Mr. Uh, Dunn's motion represents. So I'd be prepared to amend the declaration accordingly. And I also should just clarify that we're working off of a revised declaration that was sort of redrafted to sort of break language out to make it a little bit more um, legible and to address uh, some concerns about the proper name for uh, the coronavirus COVID-19 um, uh, outbreak. So uh, folks should be looking at the revised declaration if they're following along uh, at home on Novus. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm fine with uh, either thing, but I, I'm fine with the original language proposed by Mr. Carroll. Um, Mr. Dunn, is, is call on you one last time. I, I'm all set, thank you. Okay. Um, and just because I did it out of sort, um, I don't know if there's anyone from the public who wanted to, I feel like I'm being disrespectful, say wave in, I don't know what the word. So we have hands raised by uh, Jordan Weinstein and uh, someone identified as Jeff's iPad. If that's Jeff Monroe, no, I'm only kidding. Jeff's iPad. All right, and we'll end it after that. Um, uh, tell me, member, Mr. We Jordan Weinstein. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I just have a, a couple of questions about the sort of broad nature of some of the language. Um, in the declaration of emergency and one of them is the um that it seems that actions can be taken by quote the arlington town manager and all personnel and agents unquote um and wonder whether that uh, those actions can be specified to some degree or articulated um and the second question i have is whether the Arlington, uh, under this uh, declaration, if the Arlington police force is going to be given expanded powers, and if so, what those powers might be. Thank you. Okay, um, I'll definitely take those comments. I, I've really deviated from what we normally do on this. I don't know if anyone um, wants to speak to that or if it's... Um, someone, I think Reaper, you got all your sound on. Mr. DeCourcy? Yeah, I, and, and I defer to Attorney Heim on this, but I, I, this, this may be just moving around commas in, in that section. So in the, in the therefore where it says town manager, um, you know, perhaps the, the, the comma rather than being after select board should be after town personnel and agents. And I just want to ask him if that um, might address the, the concern Mr. Weinstein raised. Attorney Hine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, which line is that, Mr. DeCourcy? Okay. So in, in, the, in the therefore section, and it were it, uh, one, two, three, four, five, line five, after town manager, there isn't a comma there, but perhaps there should be a comma there. And then on the next line, striking the comma after select board and putting mm -hmm. it after agents. So it's the town managers who the town manager who's taking action appropriate to respond to the emergency uh, after consultation with the chair of the select board and all town personnel and agents. Sure. Um, uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Yes, Attorney Hine. So I, I guess I want to be clear about a few things. Um, I, I think that we could certainly, you know, move commas around, uh, but the town manager already is the um, authority that sort of presides over sort of town personnel. Um, so it's, it's not an extraordinary change for our form of government. Mm -hmm. With respect to the police department, um, I guess I wanna provide some reassurance that there's nothing in here that provides some sort of extraordinary power to arrest or something of that nature that the state does not provide. In other words, we can't make up uh, new criminal laws under this declaration. But I will give an example of how these types of declarations um, might uh, uh, sort of uh, be 
relative to talent personnel that isn't directly the manager. So for example, um, the health regulations already have a certain amount of power conferred in the Board of Health, but the Board of Health can issue supplemental regulations in the state, uh, in a state where they're trying to contain infectious disease. And a declaration like this might help them enforce those things. Now, most of those things would be civil enforcement measures, similar to enforcement of our town bylaws, right? Our town bylaws are basically enforced by fines. They're not enforced by, you know, being able to arrest somebody and, 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 and you know, bring them down to Middlesex or something of that nature. So um, I think we can move the commas, but I do want folks to understand that, um, you know, there are, uh, most of this is oriented around financial stuff, resource sharing, appointment of auxiliary officers. If you look at the Civil Defense Act, there's a lot of descriptions of what those limitations are on things like auxiliary first responders, firefighters, um, police officers, things of that nature. So it, it is, um, the language here is general, but I want folks to keep in mind that it's tied to a piece of legislation that's fairly uh, well detailed and folks can, can definitely take a look at that. Um, so I, I would be happy to move those comments if you'd like, uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Um, and I, I, I think it's a good thing that the revised draft says in consultation with the chair of the select board, but it's, it's not, the town manager is ultimately potentially going to direct, um, you know, health personnel is the most likely personnel on this to take what measures are necessary. And, um, you could argue that some of those measures have sort of already, um, been contemplated in terms of obviously uh this was not done by the town manager it was done by uh, in, in unis uh, alone but you know we closed our schools think those are types of things that we should be prepared for uh orders to keep restaurants closed um to you know close other types of establishment like nail salons um body work places things like that those things are the types of things that are contemplated by this okay no um that, sound, that sounds good because, again, this is just another tool um, to, uh, by stating this declaration of emergency, as Attorney Hyman and others have stated. Here. I have a question here. How about the population density of Arlington? I want to know, this is population density of Arlington. We are five square mile town. How are you handling it? This is a crazy thing. I, There's yes. no mention. Well, I just, um, I'm not sure. I don't know who's talking or I just hear someone on. I yeah, apologize. I, I, just, I just muted that, uh, that this person, uh, as you haven't called on them, and there's two other people with their hands raised. Uh, it appears his name is Ar Ar Arvind Singh. Uh, if you'd like to put him on the list to speak after the next two, I think that would be Yes, I do. Okay, no, that's that's not for you to, uh, you will be on the list, but who are the two before him? And then I just want to again say to people, um, you know, this no, is no, not no, something no. that we no, I need to I'm have, sorry, please I don't interrupt. To... Please, you have to follow. I, I, we can't have this. We had it at meetings before and we're now at the virtual meeting. I don't want to start off this way. It isn't argumentative back and forth. We have to follow a, a process and protocol. It's I'm, not not, an argument. I'm sorry, it you can't do this. Uh, uh, Mr. Town Manager, could you mute him until it's his... I don't know how he's overriding it because we I'm everybody's okay. watching this at home and I don't think this is reflective of um, how we do town government business right now. Mr. Manager, um, who are the two names before Mr. Singh? Uh, a person identifying themselves as Jeff's iPad and a person identifying themselves as Fluffball. Fluffball? Fluffball. Fluff mom? A fluff ball yep. b-a-l-l okay and i'm i'm going to stop it after this because and please um i'm not saying that jeff's ipad or fluff ball um are planning on doing this but please respect that i've relaxed the process um to try to incorporate everyone um this is not about talking about I'm micro talking here. the the from school. I'm sorry, uh, sir, sir. I haven't recognized you yet, and there's there's two people ahead of you, and it's really disrespectful. They've been waiting patiently and following the rules. Um, so if you could just please wait your turn, and this is not to argue or to go back and forth. If there's anything that you'd like the board to consider before they take their vote on the proposed uh, declaration of emergency, 
uh, Jeff's iPad. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is uh, Jeff Halperin, the 40 oh, Road. Apologies for the uh, no problem. Uh, informal name of the uh, the uh, iPad. <laughs> um, yes, I, I want to thank you um, and thank you the whole board uh, for um, amending the resolution in order to specify that the uh, termination may be uh, designated by the town manager or by the board. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I have no other comments. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Um, Fluffball. Hi, this is Beth Malof. Check apologies for the name. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't responsible for that. And um, then before I hit start your time, let me apologize for just, I, I'm not making light of it. I just couldn't, it's a little garbly, so I didn't mean to keep saying different that, names. So That's fine. Right. So it's Beth Malof, check Russell Street, uh, town meeting member. I would like to, uh, thank everyone for facilitating this meeting and enabling the public to speak. It's uh, circumstances, as we know, are unorthodox. I would like to thank also, as the previous speaker did, for, the, for allowing the amendment. I think that's um, much appreciated. I would like to um, ask, if I may, to return to Jordan Weinstein's question. I, I'm not sure I heard an answer to that as to um, what has already been decided or what actions have already been taken that this declaration of the state of emergency seeks to um, allow, or uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with the um, wording of the document, how it was stated. I, I think Jordan had a second question. Um, uh, so my question is, could we please have Jordan Weinstein's questions answered with uh, clarity? Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm, I really don't want to get into. I feel like this, you know, something else that keeps getting thrust upon uh, agenda items that really is not relevant. Attorney Heim, if you want to repeat the same thing again, um, but beyond that, I don't know what else there is to be answered, or I don't know if uh, anyone else. Sure, I, I'm happy to. I'm happy to uh, try to answer the question with a little bit more resolution, if that's um, if I can mm -hmm. try to be of help. So, I mean. I guess I, what I'm trying to convey the previous time is that the, the purpose of these declarations is to understand that there's a lot of things that aren't anticipated um, at this very moment that could come up. But to my understanding, there hasn't been any extraordinary uh, power conferred upon the police department, nor can a declaration of emergency give the police department the power to arrest for something that isn't a crime. So I, it's hard for me to, to, to respond to sort of a general question um, about how it might potentially impact the police department. The police department might be called in to provide regional services to support other communities. And we might be, um, you know, depending on how things shake out, I know that some officers in Boston uh, were reported to test positive for COVID-19 um, earlier today. It may be that, you know, there's, uh, we, we have to rely upon some of our uh, regional partners um, the police chief would have to speak more specifically to what they would foresee as unusual needs. But I guess the thing that I'm just trying to provide some assurance on is there's nothing in this that provides the police department some sort of relaxation of, you know, due process or um, allows them to, you know, have, conduct warrantless searches or something of that nature. It's mm -hmm. primarily okay. going to be tied okay. to a mm -hmm. response to the public health emergency. And mm -hmm. so the personnel that are most likely to avail themselves in this particular context are our public health workers. So that if there's some ambiguity about whether or not our public health officials are allowed to, for example, um, I think I, I gave was like close a nail salon because they don't want people congregating and being in close contact, um, this declaration might help them uh, get to that, uh, to the place where they have the ability to do that if they didn't already. There are lots of things in the public health laws that already outline um, certain processes for infectious disease, but a lot of those laws were written a long time ago. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's been a while since we've had an outbreak of this nature. And um, it's primarily those types of things that I would anticipate this would be helpful for in terms of, you know, authorities that aren't sort of ordinary. 
I don't know if you know. No, the that's select... fine. No, okay. and I I just want to say that um, uh, whether intentional or not, um, I, I don't think this is the time to uh, take what's before us and uh, cast aspersions to the women and men over at the police department, um, along with all of our uh, town employees who are going above and beyond exemplary job and um, at the sake of their own uh, personal safety to make sure that um, in their family's safety. Um, so uh, I, I do wanna apologize if any apology is owed there. If, if I've allowed this to kind of stream out and I just would remind people to um, recognize the, the world that we're in and the, and the community and the, what the town of Arlington is and what we're facing right now um, and it's at some point, we, you know, um, you make your voice known, make your positions known, but um, you really can't keep in, imparting this, um, which really hasn't been a, uh, something that's been discussed and will continue to be discussed. But um, I really want to stick to, um, and I don't want to regret <laughs> relaxing the rules and, and letting the public speak. So we have one last speaker, Avril Singh. I, I, uh, Madam Chair, I, I, do, I don't see him as a participant any longer. Okay. Okay, so um, first, um, I've written it down so many other ways. Um, with the- Ma Madam uh, Chair, uh, Lin Lynette Martin has now raised her hand. All right, and this will be the last person because um, Ms. Martin. Hi, sorry. Again, I had a hard time getting off mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Um, so I, I just wanted to state, I, I, I didn't take that last question to be a, a statement about the police department. I just, I feel like they were just asking sort of what would the specific expanded powers be? And I understand uh, by Mr. Himes' response that it's you know unknown in this type of a situation um, what what the response what what would be needed which I I recognize uh, is something that's needed right now in the state um, I did want to ask if there's anything that can be clarified regarding in the language it says what prior actions um, that prior actions are being retroactively ratified confirmed and adopted are there any specific prior actions that were taken by the town manager that we are retroactively ratifying, confirming, and adopting um, today? If there's something specific, um, I know some residents were just wondering about that, that's all. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Lynette. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine? Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been a series of closures and restrictions that have been issued and reported uh, to the public via various channels over the course of the past week, uh, inclusive of the school closures, closures of town offices, and uh, the actual work that can be conducted or processed by town offices, closure of uh, playgrounds. Today, the announcement of the closure of the dog park, tennis courts, and basketball courts. Uh, we've also closed uh, nail salons, beauty salons, barber shops, other personal care services. Um, today, or going into effect tomorrow, when the governor's stay in place uh, order and uh, non essential service order goes in place, we'll be putting tighter restrictions on uh, pickup and delivery of takeout food. Uh, to make sure that we're limiting uh, the risk during those transactions. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that that's exhaustive, but uh, th those actions are inclusive of all those that we've issued over the past week. And again, uh, available via the town website, social media, uh, and, and other channels as well, uh, and the local media as well. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chapdelaine. Um, so we have a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Um, what I'm hearing is um, versus doing this revisiting it every month on the 23rd. Uh, Attorney Heim has the uh, language initially proposed by Mr. Kiro that this remains in effect either until the town manager notifies the select board or the select board votes to lift the emergency to not go beyond June 30th, 2020 without further recommendation of the select board. Do I have that close, Mr. Kiro? Yes, you do. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Attorney Heim, uh, did I say it succinctly or clear enough? I've got it. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, and I'm going to ask one last time um, if any of my colleagues want to, before I take this to a vote, to indicate by 
Zoom waving. Um, if not, on a motion by Mr. Curo, seconded by Mr. Dunn, roll call attorney Hine. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. So 5 0, agenda item eight, declaring local state of emergency. Thank you. We now go to agenda item nine. I'm going to ask one of my colleagues to raise their hand. Correspondence received 2020 Patriot State cancellation by Laura Muncy, Parade Committee. Uh, move approval, or excuse me, move receipt. We have move receipt by Mr. Dunn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Um, if anybody wants to discuss this, if not, from my colleagues on a motion, move receipt by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Roll call, Attorney Hine. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curro? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. And that's a unanimous vote on move receipt where um, Ms. Munsey recognizes as the rest of the town that the Patriots Day is a great community event, historical event, but in light of the current times that we're in, um, it wouldn't be safe for anyone to um, have it this year. And we look forward to next year. Um, with that, I will move on to new business. Attorney Heim. No new business. Uh, town manager, Mr. Chapterling. I have no new business. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Hurd. No new business. Mr. Carroll? I, I just want to say, you know, we've been talking this evening about a number of, um, you know, actions in relation to, to the, the current public health emergency. And I'm sure we're all in accord in thanking our, um, not only Mr. Chaplain and, and his staff and, and uh, Mr. Heim, but our public health and, and uh, first responders, um, uh, professionals in the town and the others within town government have made such a, a sacrifice during this time, as well as all of our small business owners and our, our families. We know um, it's a it's a big sacrifice. Our healthcare workers, supermarket workers. Um, I was up uh, <clears throat> at the supermarket in the Heights this, this past weekend, and um, I s saw that uh, the store was being very um, disciplined about letting only a certain number of people in, and the people who were lining up we're just automatically spacing themselves six feet apart, six feet apart. So, I mean, I think to our residents, it's just, uh, we have to thank everyone who's been cooperating with all of the information that's been been uh, coming out. And the last I'll say, um, our public schools, I know that the teachers and councils are really working to try to provide our students with um, some learning and enrichment uh, during this time. And I'll just say that I, I noticed that one of the things that um, was sent out by the counseling office was a number of suggestions to, to address stress and anxiety during, during this time. And I think that's very real, probably for all, for all of us. Um, and um, there are a number of suggestions of resources. And I'll, I'll just say as an aside that one of the resources was actually looking at webcams of, of live animals that our family is actually gone to that looking at the live panda cams and i'll say that after this evening's meeting i am uh, very much empathizing with the pandas being within the uh, enclosed space and on the uh, camera with uh, everyone but whatever outlet folks have i mean please do um, address your stress and anxiety and take a look on um, the, the the town website there are resources for mental health resources if folks are feeling really stressed and anxiety during this time We'll get through it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. DeCourcy? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And this may not be new business, but just a question. Um, are you going to address the scheduling of our next meeting? Because it seems like we need a meeting before April 4th. And I don't know if that's already on our um, already planned. Um, not as of what would you want the meeting before the fourth well, don't, it, 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 maybe a question for attorney don't don't we need to take the official vote attorney Heim, before the before election day that's correct election? 
Um, that's yes, Mr. DeCourcy, that's correct. So we would either want to have a meeting at the end of this week or probably next Monday um, in the ideal scenario. Okay, so why don't we propose, and I um, and thank you, Mr. DeCourcy, for remembering to take care of that. Um, I'll, if With my colleague's permission, can we look at um, a meeting on March 30th? Um, Mr. Dunn? My calendar appears to be wide open. <laughs> I was going to say, if anyone has, no, um, sorry, uh, Mr. Kiro? Yeah, that would be fine. Mr. Hurd? Yep, any day. Mr. DeCourcy? Yep, that's fine. Okay, and Mr. DeCourcy, is, is, um, we will schedule a meeting for March 30th, 2020, again through a virtual meeting through Zoom to commence at 7.15 p.m. Is that your intent? Yes, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, any other new business, Mr. DeCourcy? No, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dunn? No new business. Um, I guess uh, just two things. Um, I've certainly done my best to do this um, first uh, virtual select board meeting. Um, and I've also been going through uncharted uh, ter uh, territory. I guess I would say to first to Attorney Heim, um, where this is new and new technology. And I can hear Kevin Grilly in my head saying, finally, you guys did this. This is what I wanted for 15, 20 years. Yes, Kevin, I'm sorry. Uh, we did do it. Um, I guess I would ask Attorney Heim, and I'd be surprised if there were, but if there are any guidelines in terms of this new virtual uh, select board meeting through Zoom um, to provide that to the board, as well as um, I would ask my colleagues to feel free if um, anything I did as chair or didn't do as chair tonight um, that would make this a more effective uh, meeting. Um, I think eventually at some point when appropriate, it should be perhaps an agenda item where um, everybody talks about, I mean, my colleagues, thank you, have given me the leeway to sort of um, expand how a select board meeting is done, but because we're doing it in a different way, I felt the need in the times that we're in that people should speak. And then lastly, I, I just want to say, you know, looking for any information, your best resource is the town website, arlingtonma.gov. Um, I know there's lots of information out there, but anything that you want that you can take to the bank that's been fact-checked and fact-based and, you know, is representative of the town, you know, please go there, go there to um, sign up for town alerts, sign up for the reverse 911, um, as well as to connect to any of the, of the departments. And I agree with um, Mr. Kiro, my colleagues, these are stressful times, they are anxiety ridden. Um, you know, please don't watch the news 24 seven, there are resources that are available through our Board of Health, um, our state Senator Cindy Friedman, um, has been a champion, um, has recently received some awards and gotten some really important legislation through. There's also on our town website as well as mass.gov um, resources um, to help you take care of your whole body, mind and soul. Um, I hope the select board tonight has demonstrated that you know we're rising to the occasion or continuing on a new way um, and getting the business done so you can rest assured with that and any one of us is available for, for you. But again, Arlington, arlingtonma.gov, that should be your first go-to. Um, uh, thank you for joining us in this forum. Our next scheduled board meeting is um, April 4th, as Mr. DeCourcy raised, 2020 at 17. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn by Mr. Dunn. Uh, just uh, correcting on the date. I think we, we didn't, we just say March 30th for the next meeting. Oh, March 30th, I apologize. Yes, March 30th, 2027. Move adjournment. Moved by Mr. Dunn, is there a second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. DeCourcy on a motion to adjourn by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Roll call, Attorney Heim, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. And good night and God bless Arlington. We will see you on March 30th, 2020.